Greetings, my friends and fellow humans. I'm Peter Daniel Berg, and today I'm going to be showing you my technique for creating really good pixel art of linear wood grain. It's also a pretty fun technique. I'm using a mouse because you don't need a tablet to do this. So open up Photoshop or your image editor of choice and create a new canvas. I'm going to go with 64 by 64 pixels because that'll give us a good amount of pixel real estate to work with. And I'll create a few more views of this canvas to show you what it looks like at different scale factors. All right, select a nice shade of brown for your base tone. This can vary if you want to emulate a specific kind of wood, but I'm just going to go with a generic wood-like brown. Fill the canvas with your base tone using the bucket tool. Now select black on the color panel. Switch to your pencil tool. Set it to a width of one pixel and set the opacity to 10%. Finally, create a new layer. Note that in most image editing software, the left shift key is used to lock the current tool to a directional axis. However, it may be different in your program. Now here's the fun part. Rapidly pump the left shift key and simultaneously swipe the mouse up and down As you can see, this is a very fun technique. It's easy to go hog wild. <laughs> but you can see that we're already making some progress. So it may take you a while to pin down the timing as it has for me. However, you can observe that the transparent lines are accumulating and ultimately creating a visual effect reminiscent of wood grain. Ultimately, it's just a matter of personal taste, how it comes out. But there is also a matter of random chance involved, and sometimes you have happy accidents. For example, that was not particularly happy, even though it was an accident, but you can get certain dark streaks in here that resemble the grooves between grains. Now, it's okay if you end up with really dark grain. It's also okay if the stroke jumped horizontally in a few places. That usually happens. This is what touch-up is for. For touch-up, select the eraser, set it to pencil mode, width of one pixel, opacity 10%, and go through correcting problem areas in a more careful fashion. So right now I'm focusing on removing horizontal streaks that stand out as particularly bad. And again, it's really just a matter of uh, personal aesthetic choices. Because we all know we live for that aesthetic. Well, I'd say that looks pretty good. If you'd like, you can set a filter of offset. Offset this by half of the vertical height and go through and continue so that the wood grain is seamless if you're looking for a seamless pattern. This can be useful if you have a uh, large area to tile with wood, for example, a wooden floor. And then similarly, you can touch this up again using the eraser tool. And finally, offset it once more to return to its original state. And you don't need to change the offset factor because it's exactly half of the canvas height. All right, I'd say that looks pretty good. Now, this same technique can be applied further to make, for example, wooden crates. I love wooden crates, partly because this technique makes them so easy to draw. Let's draw one. Let's create a new canvas. Let's choose 64 by 64 pixels again. I'll also create several scaled views of the canvas again. Select your base tone and fill the canvas. Let's make this crate a little darker. This time, create a new layer. Select a lighter tint of your base tone. Reset your pencil tool to 100% opacity. And create a thick border around the edge. I'm going to make it a 7 pixel thick border. And that may be a bit still too dark. 
as usually, it's always about trial and error until you find something that looks fantastic. We can simply zoom all the way over here, and we can simply zoom all the way over here, and we can simply, let's see. All right. There we have the basic structure. You should make sure that your bucket tool is set to contiguous mode when you fill these sections in, if you have done it the way I have done it. All right, that's on a new layer. So create a third layer in between the first two. We can draw the grooves in the planks using a darker version of the base tone and a much lighter version of the base tone to make evenly spaced bars. So we select the base tone Go just a little bit darker. Let's turn on the grid. I have my grid set to a uh, width of 16 pixels with two subdivisions so that we can e more easily see where the uh, width of the canvas lines up with the pixel grid in an even fashion. So we're drawing on the third layer, which is in between the first two. And slowly we're creating these lines between the planks. Now we select this base tone again, select a much lighter version. There we go. And yes, the pixel grid or the grid proper may help you with this. Now here's the fun part again, create a fourth layer above the layer with the plank grooves, select black, one pixel, Opacity 10%. Just for safety, I'm going to adjust it. And go wild. At this point, I probably do not need the grid. Just make sure to cover the space inside the border entirely. In fact, it doesn't matter too much if you have a few horizontal lines. They'll simply look like the ends of the planks. And just for fun, let's create a knot hole in this plank. So we lighten the area first to create some space. And then we go over with the pencil tool again. Let's reset this to 20% so it happens a bit quicker. And we simply uh, darken in a uh, circular form and then retouch up with the eraser still at 10% until we have just the slightest impression of a circular knot hole in the wood. Perhaps this tree had a bruise when it was alive. And the knot hole formed around the bruise like a callus or a scar tissue formation giving the tree some protection from the elements around its wound. I love trees. All right, that looks pretty darn good. Next, we'll create an inset shadow for the border. This will be a little different. Create a layer under the layer with the border. Reset your pencil's opacity. Select medium gray. That's black with the brightness changed to 50%. And carefully, well, this is exactly why we do this. Outline the inside of the border. And it should be as simple as using shift click to hold down and drag to create the lines. Change your color's brightness to 70% now and outline the inside of this border one step further in. Now you may say shadows are not white, right? Well, finally, we set this layer's blending mode to multiply. And I find this is an easier method of creating the inset shadow, because you can see the shadow easily on top of the grain you've already drawn, so you can see if you've made a mistake. And you can play with uh, how deep this shadow looks by changing the opacity of the shadow layer after you've set it to multiply. For example, it looks a lot shallower if I set it to 50%, but let's go with 100% just for the contrast. Now, we'll make the seams where the planks that constitute the crate's border are joined together. 
choose a color that is halfway between the base tone and the lightest color. You may have to turn off the wood grain layer to see this. So I've selected my base tone, I've selected my lightest color, I visually judge that the in-between is about there. So we select our pencil tool at 100% opacity and one pixel wide and join the corners on a new layer above the border layer to the canvas. This is It's okay if this is a subtle color, it's perfectly fine. And just to speed things along, we can use shift click to draw along a directional axis more carefully this time. That may look very subtle. However, we can add highlights and shadows to these grooves using the lightest tone and the base tone, assuming the light is coming from above, like so. I really think this is starting to shape up. All right. Finally, create one more layer. Set your pencil to black at 10% opacity, one pixel wide. And have some fun. Here you're trying to stay within the boundary of the border, but it's okay if you go outside of it briefly. Or even if you go outside of it completely does not matter at this stage. We're just looking for the buildup of the form. My entire monitor is shaking from the vigor of pressing the shift key and moving the mouse. Generally you want everything covered so that there are few areas where the base tone shows through entirely because we can always change this in touch up again. At this stage, it's easier to take away than it is to, it is to put down. During the touch-up process, you can use the selection tool while you're on the layer for the border's wood grain to select the extent of the inner box and press delete. Select and hit delete to remove the inner noise that bled over. And now finally, we turn on the inner grain. And thusly, you have constructed a pixel art crate. I think that looks pretty darn good. All right. Now, here are some other crates I've made. As I said, I really like crates. So here, for example, is a very tall crate. Here's another one, which is nice and rich mahogany. And here's one which is square and has a crossbar. Diagonal cross beams can be made simply by drawing a single plank then rotating it to meet the corners while your transform interpolation mode is set to nearest neighbor. Then you can simply add shading using medium gray on a layer with its blending mode set to multiply. I'm Peter Daniel Berg and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on my technique for drawing really good pixel art of linear wood grain. As an afterward, this technique can be adapted for curved surfaces by not holding down the left shift key and following the contour of the shape. Ave sol, ave humanitas, fili solis, and have a good day.